Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So, um, today we're gonna talk about Onion Boy. Um, I don't want to become an Onision channel, just so you all know, but when I see tomfoolery afoot, you best believe I'm gonna talk about it. I'm sorry, my fucking idiot neighbors keep screaming, and they live three houses down, so if you hear them... I don't know what to tell you. Anyways, so I'm talking about Onision's I'm falling apart dot dot dot, I'm sorry, and I'll put a link in the description in case you want to cringe. So, I'm not going to put any of his content in my videos because we all know very well what's going to happen there. Alright, so first of all, it's in black and white. Of course it is, because what makes things look more meaningful and tragic than black and white? Um, I think he's wearing eyeliner, I don't know if that's to make things seem more emotional, emo, whatever. So first of all, he says um, business a million times within the first minute. Like I think I've heard the word business at least five times. He claims that his kind of logic behind everything he bought was, could I explain this to the IRS? Obviously that didn't work and later on in the video he claims that he didn't have an education on what um, how the IRS works, how taxes work, so it's like how would you know what the IRS wants if you don't even know what you shouldn't be doing, you know? Like if you don't know the wrong thing, how do you know the right thing? So anyways, at 1 minute 50 he blames TurboTax um, because like apparently they didn't explain to him that when he files things as business expenses he has to do x y and z which leads me and I think multiple other people to the question of why didn't you fucking hire someone to do your taxes if you don't know how? Go to fucking H&R Block, it's not that hard. And then he goes on to say that he didn't know he had to log all of his business transactions whether that was you know like where he was driving his business expense car to for meetings and you know everything. He just didn't log anything. And my question there is, did you really think the IRS was going to believe you on your word just because like you're a good person and they're supposed to believe you? No. Then after two minutes, he talks about how his money is invested in props and tools for filming. So the money that they're going to ask for him to pay back is already invested somewhere. If that money is already invested somewhere, then my question is, why don't you sell some of this stuff? I'm not saying that selling one thing will solve the huge debt that's coming your way, but it's going to do something in the meantime. Like you have to start with something small because, you know, that's all you can really do at this point. Then at 248, he says, an insane wave is going to wipe out his life. I don't want to sound insensitive, but I really don't give a shit. I mean, whose fault is this? Whose fault is all of this? Let's ask ourselves the question. Greg's. Sorry to put it that way, sorry if that makes you sad, but the reality is that this wave that's coming to wipe you out, there's one person who could have made it not happen and that's you. And the simple thing was go to H&R Block or get someone to help you with your taxes and don't think that you know everything about everything. Done. Solved. If you could go back in time, follow my advice. Then from three to four, he complains that he might lose his cars and house and complains about what he'll have to show for the past 10 years. So complaining about losing your car and your house, normal. Anyone would be the same. Like, that's just natural. However, I have to wonder how much of this is about vanity because if you're saying that what will you have to show for the past 10 years, like, does that really matter here? Is that really what you're concerned about? Because honestly, if I were about to lose my house and cars, the last thing I would give a shit about is what I had to show for 10 years. I'd be worried about what I'm gonna do in the future, what I'm gonna do for my family, what I'm gonna do to, you know, sustain them and, you know, manage to get by. I wouldn't care about the last 10 years and what I had to show for them. That's just pure vanity. Honestly, that's useless and honestly him even bringing that up just kind of weakens his argument if you ask me. At 513 he says that he's just trying to make people laugh and you know what? That's cool. Um, you don't make me laugh. Uh, I hope someone else does. But at the same time, the thing you've been doing, the job you've job you've been doing, because I say job like this because there's no contract, but the job you've been doing for the past 10 years has been a privilege. You understand that your job has been what a lot of people's dream jobs are, and I don't know 
how anyone could live their lives assuming that a contractless job would keep on going forever. The apocalypse fucking sucks. This is something we all know. At the same time, all of these big YouTubers have stopped complaining about it because A, you can get a job, especially since there's you and Lainey, you both or one of you could get a part-time job or even a full-time job. Then, <clears throat> All these other YouTubers are also aware that this was a possibility the whole damn time. So if you ignored that this was a possibility and this was a potentially gonna happen to you, that's also your fault. So as much as the apocalypse sucks, don't act like this is like the weirdest possible thing and who knew it could happen because if you don't have a contract, anything can happen. 523, he says that he doesn't see how losing his house is a first world problem. I'll tell you. The house you're living in and everyone who's watched your videos has seen it is large. So what you could do is, or what you could have done earlier, is downgrade. And that sucks and nobody wants to do that, but at the same time it's a first world problem because you'd rather lose your- like you are losing your house instead of choosing to downgrade. Why don't you just downgrade? Like he said in the video that he already sold his other set and it's like then why don't you just move to an apartment or a smaller house now and sell or, you know, rent this house to someone else? At 610 he says his transactions should be self-evident from the credit card reports and, you know, therefore no receipts are needed. And to that I say BS because let's say I had a business card. I could use that business card to go out to lunch by myself every fucking day and then claim that it was a business thing. So he complains that, they a that they're asking like what the conversations were about and it's like that's normal because the nature of your conversations or what is gonna help them assess whether it was an actual business transaction or if you were just chilling with a friend and chose to call it a business transaction. At 7.22, he says that they nitpick and like he was saying how like if he doesn't have a receipt for one little thing, they assume that everything else is a lie. Now, on this part, I feel bad for him because like I definitely think that that's really shitty to kind of assume that everything is a lie just because he might not have a receipt for one small thing. If anything, blame him for that one small thing, but you can't say everything's a lie. So on that, I completely understand and I do think that that's a good point to bring up that you can't kind of say everything's all black or all white like there is some gray and then some black and white. At 7.50 until the end, he starts crying. Um, like I said, I don't want to be insensitive. I don't want to invalidate anyone's feelings. However, I needed my cringe goggles to watch that because it came off as so incredibly fake and forced like, I'm getting goosebumps. You know how I told you when I cringe, I get goosebumps? Like, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it. Ugh. I almost felt bad for him towards the end of the video, but then he started, like, the fake crying thing, and I was like, this guy's full of shit. Um, I don't wish the problems he has on anyone. I don't even wish them on him, even if I don't like him and don't respect him anymore. But this entire video is so unnecessary. How many videos has Onision now made about the apocalypse, about losing money, about debt, about losing his house? Like, how many are you gonna do before you shut the hell up about this topic? I can empathize with his frustration because it must be very frustrating to be in the situation he's in. The thing is, the situation he's in, he's in it because of A, himself, and B, also his fucking self. So if he wants to blame someone, he can just look in the mirror and then fucking just cowboy up and do what you need to do. Like these constant wailing and woe is me videos just need to stop. They have no point and more than anything he's just showing how irresponsible he's been the entire time. Everyone can make a mistake. The point is that you need to take responsibility for it, which he's not doing. He's turning to blame everyone but himself and I'm sorry I'm not here for that. Anyways, um, as usual, uh, leave me your opinions, what your, your views are on this, what you guys think. Um, and let me know if you want to see something in particular. Also, by the time this video goes up, I will have gotten a P.O. box and I'll put that in the description. By no means you have to send me anything, it's just someone asked me if they could, so I got one. And yeah, thanks for watching.